to the Art Squad. Today, we're going to be telling some stories with Natalie. And once upon a time... Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Storytelling Nook. Today, I have a Japanese folk tale for you, and it's one of my favorite stories to tell, so I hope you like it too. It goes like this. Mukashi Mukashi. Long, long ago in Japan, there lived an older couple. They were very happy together, but the one thing they wanted more than anything was to have a child of their own. So every day, they walked to the temple. Will you walk with me? They marched and marched right over to that temple. Are you walking with me? And when they got there, they lit a match. Will you help me? and they lit an incense, and they clapped their hands together twice. Will you do it with me? And they bowed their heads and they prayed, and they prayed, and they prayed that they could have a child of their own. Well, soon after, their wishes came true, and they had a little, uh, no, it wasn't quite like that. They had a little, it was more like they had a little baby boy. He was so little, he was the size of my thumb. So they called him Isun Boshi, one inch boy. Well, they didn't mind that he was little. They loved him all the same, and with time, Isun Boshi grew in strength. He grew in intelligence. Oh, he grew in kindness. But did he grow in height? No, he remained one inch boy. Time passed. And on the day of his 16th birthday, they were sitting at the breakfast table eating Asa Gohan breakfast. And Isun Boshi declared, today is my 16th birthday. And I am going to go out into the world and seek my fortune. I want to be a great samurai. He wanted to be a samurai? A warrior, his mother said, yet no, Isumboshi. Anata wa chisai desu. You are too small. Yet, said his father, sore wa abunai desu. It is too dangerous. But Isumboshi, he was adamant. So his parents, all they could do was help him. His mother made him a sword out of a sewing needle and a belt made out of straw. And his father made him a boat out of a wooden rice bowl and an oar uh, made out of chopsticks. And they took him down to the river, put the boat in the water, Isun Boshi bowed to show his respect and thank his parents for everything. And then he climbed into the boat and as he waved goodbye, the boat took off down the river and Isum Boshi, he began to row. Will you help me row? He rowed, and he rowed, and he rowed, are you helping? And he rowed, oh, that's good. Oh, good rowing, yep. And he rowed, and he rowed, and it was very far, so he rowed, 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 until he got to the capital city. And right there on the hill was the emperor's palace. Isumboshi walked up, and in front of the palace, he saw two enormous guards standing like this. So Isumboshi bowed deeply, and he said, <clears throat> Um, uh, watashi no namai wa Isumboshi desu. My name is Isumboshi, and I want to be a great samurai. And the guards thought they they, they heard something, uh, and they looked around, but they, they didn't see anything. So Isumboshi said again, Watashi no namai wa Isumboshi desu. I want to be a great samurai. 
And then they looked down and they saw this little boy about this big. And they saw him go, And they looked down, they picked up this little boy, and in their hands, he again explained that his name was Isumboshi and he wanted to be a samurai and serve the emperor. Oh, they laughed. <laughs> that was the funniest thing they'd ever heard. <laughs> but then they thought, oh, the emperor will get a kick out of this. Let's take him in. And so they did. And Isumboshi got to stand in front of the emperor. And he bowed so, so deeply to show great respect. And he said, Watashi no namai wa Isumboshi desu. And I would like nothing more than to serve you, great emperor. Well, the emperor didn't laugh. The emperor just said, well, uh, yeah, Isumboshi. Well, we don't need a, a samurai right now. Uh, uh, but tell me, uh, how old are you? And Isumboshi said, well, today I am 16. And the emperor said, well, you know, I, I have a daughter and she is your age. And she is very lonely in this palace all by herself. Perhaps you could be her friend, her attendant. And Isumboshi thought that was a great honor. Indeed, he said yes. And soon after, well, they went everywhere together. Isumboshi and the emperor's daughter, they went through the gardens. They went to the temple. She would always have him tucked inside the pocket of her kimono. One day, there was a great cherry blossom festival. It was springtime and the cherry blossoms were in bloom and everyone was gathered in the garden. There were people, there were guards all around and all of a sudden they heard this sound. Can you help me with it? And the ground started shaking with each sound that was being made, everything was shaking, and then it got faster and louder and louder and faster and faster and faster and faster until all of a sudden out of the bushes popped two enormous oni. Oni are Japanese ogres. Well, everybody screamed and ran, including the guards and the samurai. Isumboshi was the only one left. So he did the only thing he knew to do. He grabbed his sword and he said to the Oni, stop right there. Except all the Oni heard was <coughs> and they looked down and saw this little tiny boy. So the Oni bent down, picked him up took a look at Isumboshi and popped him in his mouth and swallowed. Well, Isumboshi, I told you, he was quite smart. So what did he do inside that ogre's tummy? He grabbed his needle, his sword, and he began to poke, 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 poke. Can you do it with me? Poke, 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 poke. And what did the Oni do? The ogre went, ooh, 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 ooh. Can you do that with me? Ooh, 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 ooh. And so what did Isumboshi do? Again, you can help me. He did what? Poke, 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 poke. And the Oni went what? Ooh, 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 ooh. And all of a sudden he couldn't take it anymore, so he, <coughs> coughed up Isumboshi. Isumboshi landed by the Oni's toe. He stabbed the Oni in the toe. He ran up the other Oni, stabbed him between the eyes, and both Oni went running away crying for their mummies. <laughs> well, Isumboshi had saved the day. 
And when they looked down, they saw something incredible. Now, what you might not know about an Oni is that they always carry a magic hammer or a mallet. And if anyone was to find that mallet, well, they would get a wish. The emperor's daughter looked down and said, look, Isunboshi, it's the Oni's mallet. Do you know what this means? We get a wish. And the emperor's daughter said, Isunboshi, it is you who saved me, so you should have this wish. Oh, uh, Isunboshi said, well, I don't really need anything. I have enough food, and I have friends, and I have family. Uh, oh, then he thought, but the one thing I would like more than anything is to be a full-grown boy. And with those words, Isun Boshi, he grew, grew grew, grew, grew. Can you help me? He grew, 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 grew. Tell me more. He grew, 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 grew until he was about this high. Well, Isumboshi, he ended up becoming named as head samurai because he was so brave and saved the day. And because the emperor's daughter and Isu and Boshi were such good friends and they enjoyed each other's company so much. Well, he was given her hand in marriage. And this story ends like many good stories because they all lived, what? Happily ever after. The end. Hmm. Yay! Did you help me with the actions? Did you like that story as much as I do? I hope so. You know, that story tells us so many great lessons. This idea that it doesn't matter how small you are. If you have a vision for what you want to be, you can be that. You work hard and you go and you do what you want in your life. And it also tells us that um, it's really, really important to dream. So why don't we take this week just dreaming or maybe drawing pictures of everything we would love to be. What would you like to be? Um, you know, and it doesn't have to be limited. You can just say, hey, I want to be Superman. Nothing wrong with that. Or a samurai or, you know, a doctor or a president or a prime minister or whatever you would like. Um, that would be a great thing to be thinking about this week, I think. I hope you like that story and I hope you will join us again another time and come back again in the storytelling nook. See you again. Bye for now.